Hi everyone, welcome back on my channel. My name is Charlotte and today in this episode of Taiwan in the Global News, I want to talk about an article that was published in a Belgian newspaper called Het Laatste News on the 29th of May. And I was pretty surprised by this article because I had no idea that a law like that existed in Taiwan. So uh, the title of the article that I'm going to translate from Dutch is Taiwan abolishes law that sentences people for adultery. So apparently in Taiwan, if you are a married couple and one of the two people cheats, um, they can be prosecuted in the court of law and face up to one year of prison. I had no idea. We don't have a law like that in Belgium. But let's go ahead and read the article. The highest court of justice in Taiwan has decided to abolish a law that could convict a person who cheats in a marriage to a prison sentence. Su Tsong Li, president of the judicial branch of the Taiwanese government, has said in a statement that the 85-year-old law has been abolished because it was a serious violation of a person's sexual autonomy and a serious invasion of personal privacy. Previous to this decision, the Ministry of Justice has conducted a research finding that 70% of the population was against the abolishment of this law. This number really surprises me actually, so this means that many people in Taiwan are still um, in favor of this law and think it's good that a person uh, who cheats ends up potentially in prison. <laughs> Um, Quan Xiaowei, an assistant to professor at the University of Taipei, has called this decision of the court a milestone in the history of sexual human rights in Taiwan. It was stated that women had a 20% higher chance of getting convicted of the charge, even though men were committing the cheating act more often. Activists stated that the law could also pressure victims of sexual assault not to file charges, because the adultery chargers were far more easy to prove in court than sexual assault. I don't know what you all think about this, but in my personal opinion, it can only be positive that this law doesn't exist anymore. Because if you take into account those women who are fearing to report rape and sexual assault, because they fear that if they fail to prove the rape, then they might be the ones that get convicted for cheating. You know, so that's pretty scary and I can understand that many women are not prepared to take that risk so they just keep quiet. So I think that's a real big problem. And don't get me wrong, here in Belgium we don't have this law but it is completely uh, socially unacceptable to cheat, of course. Um, but yeah, we just don't have the government that takes care of that. It's just between those two people. It's their relationship. And if something like that happens, one person cheats, the other is free to leave, you know. And maybe in some cases, for example, if one person cheats and then uh, they want to divorce and then they are fighting for the children's custody, maybe in that case a judge can use this cheating argument against the person to say to the judge like, this person is not responsible, is not serious enough to take care of the children, look what they did. But it's just, yeah, it can be used against them, but it will never directly lead to some kind of sentence just to cheat on your partner. It is time to read some of your comments on last week's video about uh, the Taiwanese Human Rights Museum getting a German award. Willie Nee says, Hi, glad to see you again here, just like an old friend of mine. By the way, I'm not from Taiwan, but as you, I care about that little island. Stinky Tofu is pretty good too. Have a good time. <laughs> Thank you, Willy. I really, really um, like Taiwan too. I don't know why this small little island at the other side of the planet really caught my heart like that, but it's always nice to see other foreigners who have such a love for Taiwan too. Tracy W writes, I watch video every morning and practice my listening. Have a great video and enjoy your smile. I really hope to see you soon in Taiwan. Thank you, Tracy. And like always, I'm so happy to hear that people practice English with my video. I'm trying my best to pronounce well for you. <laughs> 
Wen Tzu Chen wrote, uh, Stinky Tofu, I heard about the museum before, but haven't been there yet. This video makes me feel that I should go for a side. Yes, you're right, you should go and I should go too. <laughs> I had the same feeling. When I was researching about that museum, I was surprised that I had never heard about it before and I was like, wow, that's really something on my list next time I go to Taiwan. That was it for today's video. I hope you found it as interesting as I did and I'm very curious to hear about your opinion about this matter. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you think it's a good thing or not that this law will be abolished. And if you stayed until the end, you are one of the elite people and let's use the password all because there's one on my shirt here, can you see it? <laughs> If you write all in the comments down below, I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you very soon in the next video. Bye bye.